If your team got guaranteed money, tell them call me. Whoop. Make me say, ma, ma, ma. I done been around the world. Yeah, I was made for this. Player performance with J.A. Cavalier. What up, what up, what up, my fellow DJs? Welcome back to another episode of everyone's favorite NFL podcast. Brought to you, of course, by everyone's favorite NFL handicapper. I am J.A. Cavalier. This is player performance. We're going to get into NFL week seven. All you need to know to beat the book. But first, let's recap week six with Tessa Hall. Back it up. One more time. All right, let's see that again. Here's your NFL week six recap. The New York Jets taking down the Packers with ease wasn't on our bingo card, but here we are. Oh, speaking of New York, how about the five and one Giants taking it to Baltimore? Tom Brady flew a PJ into Pittsburgh, lost to the Steelers, and took a PJ back to Florida to look for nursing homes. Philly is flying high after ending the gold rush and remaining undefeated. Has a coach ever been given an extension and fired in the same year? Asking for the Cardinals. Marcus Mariota learned Kyle Pitts was a guy on his team, threw him a touchdown pass, and beat the Niners. The Rams aren't back, but at least we know they can beat the struggling Panthers. Josh Allen wasn't playing for OT this time. Down goes Mahomes as a home dog. Joey Burrow walked into the Superdome with an LSU natty jersey and walked out with yet another win. Washington just needed a nighttime Carson Wentz game to get back on track. Bailey Zappi might be the next Tom Brady. The Pats are now 2-0 in his starts. The Dolphins might be injuring QBs for a social experiment at this point in another tough loss. The Jags slapped around the Colts before Matt Ryan decided to try out his own comeback and learned he liked them. Russ continues to ride the Broncos into despair with another close loss. That's your NFL Week 6 recap. Just another brutal performance on Monday night, another brutal performance by the Denver Broncos. I mean, the NFL really needs to figure a way to flex these games. It's just hard to watch. I did, however, watch that game Monday night the only way you could, in a bar getting hammered. So all game long, there's this Charger fan. And I mean, he's in full uniform, hat, shirt, pants. The guy has powder blue in his sneakers, full uniform, right? So every time the Chargers make a play, he's cheering. Now, mind you, I'm on the Denver Broncos plus the four, plus the four and a half, depending where you caught it. But this guy's in full gear, and he's cheering at the top of his lungs every time something good happens. So obviously, he wasn't cheering a lot because there wasn't much good in that game. But he was cheering. Every time something happened, he's cheering. He's going off. At the end of the game, he comes out to me, see, I told you the Chargers were going to win that game. And I'm like, dude, how much did you make? And he goes, what do you mean? I go, how much money did you make? And he goes, nothing. I was like, wait. So you were that invested and you weren't invested at all? See, I don't understand the whole fanboy thing. I don't have that fanatic gene in me. Now, I do have Dolphin season tickets, but I'm not a Dolphin fan. I go for the entertainment because I'm here in SoFlo, or I give them away to clients. Actually, more clients have been to Dolphin games in my seats than I have. Same thing with the Heat. I either go for entertainment or I give them away to clients. So I pledge allegiance to no team in the NFL. Matter of fact, the only team I care about is the team that's on my ticket. And obviously that's going to change week to week. I mean, I do pull a little bit for the Raiders, but that's because my son's a Raiders fan. So if I'm not on the other side, I'll sit there and root for the game with him. But anyway, I've said all that just to say this, less talk, more wins. The money train is pulling out. Next stop, NFL week seven. Falcons versus Bengals. Bengals are laying six. The total is now up to 47 and a half. So we all know the cast of characters here. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T, yes. They're going to put up some points. The total opened up at 43 and a half. It's now up a full four points. Originated sharps, wise guys. We've all steamed this number up. And I get asked this question a lot. So early or late, when is it better to jump on a game? Now, I really think it depends on your position on a particular game. So each game needs to be treated individually. So if you like a dog or an under, sometimes you're better waiting. Probably catch some CLV for those new to this. CLV stands for closing line value. But spots like this, obviously it's going to be early and often. There's a certain number that you need to have in mind that you're going to cap it at. And this is not that number for me. I mean, Burrow went off for 303 touchdowns last week. And don't forget, the Bengals started incredibly slow in that game. Now they come back home, friendly confines. The Bengals have scored at least 27 points in their last three wins 
Atlanta has scored 23 or more in five of its last six games. There's a history of points in this series. Games between these two teams have always been high scoring. 56 and a half per game over the last 10. Let's follow that trend and let's go over the post total in this game. 47 and a half right now. I do still like this up to 50. Lions versus Cowboys. Cowboys are laying seven. The total here is set at 48. Listen, enough with the Detroit and its great offense. We get it. They've been scoring a ton of points. But what wins games in the NFL? Defense. I mean, you saw it last week. What happened when we went up against the master last week? New England shut the Lions out. This week, now they have to deal with Cyphus, Swift, Chark, all questionable. Dallas has one of, if not the best defenses in the NFL. And they're coming off a primetime embarrassment. Good coaches or bad losses. Fuck no, I did not call Mike McCarthy a good coach. I was actually referring to Dan Quinn. Cowboys allow just 14 points a game. In an entire game this season, they allow 14 points a game. So I trust the Dallas defense way more than I trust either offense. They're going to clamp down, pretty much shut Goff and the Lions out this week. I am going to take Detroit's team total under 20 and a half. Colts versus Titans. Titans are laying two and a half. The total here is set at 43 and a half. So you fooled me once. Well, I'm actually going to give both of these teams a chance to fool me again. Look, I know that we dumped on the over in the first matchup, but I'm still going to go back to the well. We were on the right side in that game. Seven total points scored in the second half. Still a missed field goal away from cashing the ticket. The Colts offense just may have turned a corner, putting up 34 points last week. The Titans have now won three straight games. I mean, sure, the passing game looks like it's a junior high team, but Tennessee's averaged 23 points in those games. And it's like I've told my wife. I don't want the labor pains. I just want the baby. So I don't really care how they get there. Just get there. And I do believe they get there this time around. These two teams get together twice a season. They typically put up way more points than this total set at. Actually, I think what happened last game is what's keeping this total so low. They averaged close to 49 a game. Last year's two games, they averaged 53 points. I'm going to take Matty Ice. I look to get another 100-yard effort from Derrick Henry. Give me the over 43 and a half. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Three NFL games for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays. One week, $99. His Pro Football Triple Crown must go 3-0 and or the entire NFL season is free. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Link in the description below. Click the link now and jump on the money train. Buccaneers versus Panthers. So the Bucs are laying 10. The total here is set at 40 and a half. Listen, the sky's not falling in Tampa Bay, so just relax. Yeah, they're struggling offensively, but Roger Goodell hooked them up. Look, if there's any team that you want to see across the sideline, it's Carolina. If you need a get-right spot, the Panthers are your team. I mean, just ask Sean McVay and the Rams. Carolina is awful. The Panthers have lost three straight. The offense hasn't scored more than 16 points in the process. And if you need one, just a little bit extra, here's a kicker. Teams in a four-plus game ATS losing streak then come back and lay double digits the following week. Seven straight win and covers. Tampa's going to make it eight. Tampa Bay has won and covered four straight against Carolina. The Bucs seven and three ATS in the last 10. The Carolina Panthers are... 0-10 last 10 as a double-digit dog. And P.J. Walker, really? Against the seventh-best defense in the NFL? Listen, the Bucks' problems have been scoring. All of it has been offense. I mean, now that down, it's been the offensive line. Carolina doesn't get home. There's no pressure. Third worst in the sack department. They're 29th against the pass. I'm not in the habit of laying 10, but double digits just feels right in this spot. I'm going to lay the double digits in this spot. Give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by two touchdowns. Giants versus Jaguars. The Jaguars are laying three. The total here is set at 42 and a half. I mean, first off, the disrespect to this Giants team is crazy. I am in no way a Giants fan, but it it really is crazy. I don't really play into lines I don't understand. This is certainly one of those lines. I mean, is Vegas just seeing a letdown in this spot? But I'm not focused on that. What I am focused on is the total here. I mean, despite being 5-1, and this isn't an overly impressive Giants offense. I mean, this is definitely a defensive-led team. Seventh ranked in points allowed. This is one of those teams that bends, 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 but doesn't break. 
They've given up seven red zone touchdowns, tied for third best in the league. And that's going to pay dividends, especially in a spot like this. Jaguars offense has averaged just 18 points the last three games. They've only scored 40% of the time that they've gotten into the red zone at home. All of that being said, I just don't see the Jaguars scoring much, and the Giants rank 25th overall on offense themselves. It's Daniel Jones. It's Trevor Lawrence. It's not the sexiest of offenses. Under his 7-1 last eight Jaguar games, the over is hit just once in five games for the New York Giants. Give me the under the post a total of 42 and a half. Texans versus Raiders. The Raiders are laying seven. The total here is set at 45 and a half. So you listen to the entire show just to listen to this moment, the top play for the show. Guys, if you listen this long, might as well like and subscribe. We do this every week. Okay, so I like the direction of the Raiders the last couple weeks, at least offensively. It seems like Josh is starting to get it figured out. You know how when young quarterbacks in year two or three, they seem to have that aha moment? The good ones, at least. Aha. This is in college. Defenses are faster. Our team's not bigger, faster, and stronger than everyone else's. Guys aren't open by five yards. Ball has to be out faster. Well, coaches have that moment as well. Maybe not Nathaniel Hackett or Brandon Staley. Those guys are more like the Josh Rosens and Mitchell Trubisky's of the world. But the good ones, at least, they get it figured out. And what is McDaniels learning? The best way to get the ball to Adams is by giving it to Josh Jacobs. You know how a a magician uses misdirection? I'm going to show you something over here, but what's really going on is over there. Well, that's a running game to a quarterback. That's actually exactly what play action pass is. Look, I'm going to give the ball to him again. Psych, Devontae Adams for a 50-burger down the field. Aaron Rodgers, someone took the rabbit from his hat. None of his tricks are working. Defenses don't respect the receivers, load up against the run. And if you can't run the ball, play action doesn't work. He wanted out last year. Now dude just looks done. But you know who isn't done? Derek Carr. I mean, no one has ever wanted to win for a team more than Derek Carr wants to win for the Raiders. It's almost heartbreaking to see him fail. His passion for the team, I mean, it's touching. It's motivating, isn't it? So offensively, I believe they have the recipe for success. A heavy dose of Josh Jacobs, play action down the field to Devontae Adams. So of course, I'm going to take the over in this spot, right? Well, I am, but I'm going to take the Raiders team total over 26. See, I don't trust the Raiders defense at all, and I certainly don't trust Houston's offense. I will, however, trust the 10th ranked offense in the NFL. Raiders, despite the record, they've put up 30 points a game last two games. Derek Carr is at his best when he's in command, not giving the ball away. But Houston doesn't force turnover, so that's not going to be an issue. Eight all season. Love this spot for Vegas' offense. Give me the Raiders team total over 26. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Three NFL games for this Sunday. Three straight, three two-team parlays. One week, $99. His Pro Football Triple Crown must go 3-0 or the entire NFL season is free. J.A. Cavaliers Pro Football Triple Crown. Link in the description below. Click the link now and jump on the money train. That's right, guys. Get to whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E.com. Day, week, month, season pass is available. That's whylose.com. The letter Y, L-O-S-E.com. Link in the description below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, appreciation is always appreciated. And pick up this week's NFL Triple Crown. Three all-in max bets for Sunday. Three straight. Three two-team parlays. Again, link in the description below. And I just want to give a special shout out to Jordan Poyer. I mean, the guy is a football god. The dude wasn't allowed to fly to KC because of a rib injury. So what did he do? He drove. He played in the game, got the win, and then he drove back to Buffalo. Now, we're not talking about a short trip here, right? We're talking about a 12-hour plus drive, and he had to do it both ways. And listen, he also made an impact in the game. So in this day and age, when the game has gotten so soft, to see a football player still being a football player, rib injury or not, gets on the field, makes an impact. No, you're not letting me come to the game. That's it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to jump in the ride and I'm going to drive there. 
You got to love it. I mean, especially in this day and age when you're not even allowed to breathe on quarterbacks. All right, Jordan Poyer, you're my dude. All right, guys, to all my other dudes, see you guys back here next week. That's it for me. I am J.A. Cavalier. But until then, remember that with your head, not above it. Day, week, month, and season packages available on whylose.com. That's the letter Y, L-O-S-E dot com.